Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to share with you a really dumb experience I just went through that's completely my fault and not thought through very well. Um, <clears throat> when I lowered this bulkhead, I was very concerned about the seatbelts getting messed up. Haven't really dealt with these mechanisms before, so I put these binder clips on the seatbelt to prevent them from retracting. But when I tipped this thing down, both units were locked. And I didn't realize at the time that there's like a pendulum in this that senses the car is maybe upside down or something right now so it locks the seat belts automatically with pure mechanical because the battery's disconnected. But, you know, first instinct, I thought something was messed up. So, me being me, I instantly tried to take this apart to try to like f release the lever to allow it to retract again when all you really have to do is flip this bulkhead back up into the position it's supposed to be in the car and these things free right up and work as normal. So, lesson learned. The big problem was I took off the giant blue cover here to try to start taking apart this gearbox. I had really no idea what I was doing. It said, caution, do not remove on it. I guess I should have took their word for that. Because now, as you can see, the other side's yellow. The passenger side's yellow. It's that cover I took off the driver's side. And I'll show you what it took off here. So when I took it off, as you can see here, Caution, do not remove. Well, I didn't listen to that. So when I took this off, it there's a coil spring in here and it shot and sprung all the way back and I instantly knew that I screwed up. So I need to get this wound back and put back on the seatbelt reel so that when you pull your seatbelt out when you're getting in the car and let go of it, it retracts to you as like the standard setup. So um, not only did this spin all the way back, I wrote which direction I have to wind on it, but when it spun back, it also like came uh, off of the center cog, so now that the center piece inside here just spins freely, and it won't rack any torsional twist on the spring in there, so I have to take this apart and try to get the spring also back inside the cog, so... First time doing this, I'm uh, not looking forward to it. This could totally be avoided if I didn't do that stupid removal of that. So please don't do that, guys. Just realize that when they're tipped down, they're not supposed to work as they should. So learn from my lesson here. But I'm going to go ahead and try to take this apart, get the coil spring like made it on that cog again, and wind it. And when you wind it, I don't know how many twists to do it per length of seat belt so it's going to be a little bit of experimentation to get the right you know retract force as OEM which is really going to suck but um, so what you do is you wind it back and I, I, I was using a uh, what fits in there perfectly I think it's a T30 Torx bit that fits in there and mates up to those splines and when you spin it back, you might think there's no way to hold this and then slip it onto the shaft without the thing coiling back and, and going crazy and, and springing back to neutral. But you're going to coil it up on one side, and then there's this little slot on the other that you're going to stick a little flathead screwdriver in to lock that gear. Once you stick your flathead in there, it'll prevent it from spinning. And then you can remove your Torx bit, hold your flathead in this little slot, and then gently put it back on the seat belt uh, retracting reel mechanism and tighten the bolts down and then take the bolts out, take your screwdriver out, it'll be on the cog then and it won't flip back and forth. So I'm going to go ahead and try to do that here. Wish me luck. Okay, so I really have no idea what to expect here. Um, there's two little plastic tabs to release this brown piece from the, from the other piece and I know there's a spring coiled up in here so I'm um, kind of nervous about what's going to happen here. Um, these are, they aren't supposed to be tampered with, which is why you should never remove them from the car, like me, but now I'm in this situation. Alright, so I guess these brown pieces don't really push in. I think I have to pop the blue piece over the brown piece, so... Um, yeah, because the brown pieces definitely aren't flexing like a tab. Alright, I got one started off there. I got my safety glasses on because I've seen videos online of these things where the spring goes flying. If that happens to me, I'm going to be really pissed off here. Okay, that was a lot less uh, scary than I thought. <laughs> this has oil in it too. Okay, I'm quite relieved right now. This, this isn't that bad. As you can see, this spring 
came off of the winding in the center because I was spinning it each different way trying to figure out which way I was supposed to coil it and as you can see here this is quite easy to see um, I have it marked on the other side to wind it counterclockwise this direction so it would be clockwise in this direction which is true because as you turn this let me get a better angle here as you turn this clockwise it's going to pull this coil in as you can see you have many many layers of coil there so really don't know what the correct number of turns to give this is when putting it back in the car but I'm going to go ahead and take my best educated guess and it might take a little bit of uh, back and forth pulling this out of the car and, and winding it more but hopefully I won't have to take this cover off again once I get this fixed this will go back on no problem okay so that's popped in there I'm gonna feed it to the center we're locked in now I think we're good to put the cover back on because as long as I wind this the right the right direction that will not come out so I'm gonna wind it counterclockwise looking at it this way and then it'd be clockwise this way which is confirmed to be what I want as you can see I'm gonna put this in here when you wind it this is what happens here when you wind it up pulls all these coils in and if you go the wrong way you're gonna do what I just did where you dislodge that from sticking so I got my wind direction correct now I'm gonna go ahead put the blue cover back on and that is kind of a nice design by Honda I've seen some other videos online where they take these apart and the thing just goes flying and there's no like captive housing for it so that actually was a good design by Honda. All right, so the, the seat belt, I kind of, I put, I flipped that back up. I got the, you know, I guess you got the roll bar now, but I flipped the bulkhead back up and I kind of mapped out how long the seat belt would be when it's fully retracted. So when it's fully retracted, the torque force on the spring should be a lot lower than when you pull it out. So I'm going to try to maybe take a guesstimate and do like maybe five turns of preload with it at its resting position. And then install it and then pull it out and kind of see how it feels compared to the passenger side. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and count the turns I'm going to do here now. I'm going to wind in the direction that I marked on there. So I got one, two, three, four, five. Now, I th my original thought was I'd try five lines and see how that felt. It's going to feel a lot different when you pull on the seatbelt. It feels like a ton right now, but this is because I'm holding it a very small diameter screwdriver, so you're going to kind of flip it over and look for that slot now. Stick your flathead in. And once you got it in there, you see the spring didn't go flying. So I'm going to take this now, holding this firmly in there, set it on the seat bell reel, put it on the spline, and then install maybe one of these screws to keep it on there and test the tension. Alright, so I ended up settling on 12 turns uh, from zero, um, kind of when the belt is at its neutral position. So this is kind of the length I estimated it's going to be when it wraps around the, the roll bar up over the seat and then mounts to the floor. So when you're out of the car and it's fully retracted, um, the length right now, the t you know, the torque tension on there is set to 12 turns from zero counterclockwise. So it kind of feels similar to the passenger side. I don't know if there's an exact science to it, but I think I'm going to go with it and try it. As you can see, I just used this Harbor Freight flathead that went into that slot perfectly. Kind of held it together, pushed this on, only installed one of the T15 Torx fasteners to test it out and now I'm going to install the other two on the bottom and this thing uh, you know crisis averted so I learned something new about how these work um, I'd suggest you guys learn about it in this video and don't have to do this yourself but if you do I hope this video helps you didn't really find any other video like this online for an S2000 so give it a thumbs up I'd appreciate it guys and uh, leave a like subscribe and I'll see you in the next one